In the year 1054, Chinese astronomers observed an unusual natural spectacle. A large star, as bright as the full moon, appeared in the sky. It remained about 100 days and then vanished. During the 18th century, the Crab Nebula was discovered to be on the same position. In the early 20th century, it was realized that the nebula is the expanding ashes of a supernova whose explosion had been reported by the Chinese astronomers. About 50 years ago, a new type of pulsated radiation source was discovered in the middle of the nebula. Today we know it to be a quickly rotating, very compact star consisting of nuclear matter, mostly neutrons. A neutron star is an exotic object. Typically, it is more massive than our Sun, but its diameter is only 20 kilometers. This means the center of the star consists of nuclear matter compressed to extremely high densities, being 5 to 10 times higher than in atomic nuclei. Till this day it is left unclear how matter forms in such an environment. A nucleus consists of protons and neutrons, so-called nucleons, which are each composed of three quarks. The quarks are tightly bound together by gluons and in this way confined to nucleons. So far, free quarks have never been observed. Our understanding of nuclear forces still remains incomplete and fundamental questions still remain unanswered. Why are there no free quarks? Why is the mass of the nucleon approximately 50 times larger than the sum of the masses of its constituents? Answers to these and other questions are expected to be gathered from experiments with nuclear matter under extreme conditions. When an atomic nucleus is compressed to a certain density, the nucleons come into contact with each other and will resist further densifications. Such densities are achieved in collapsing stars becoming supernovas. Compressing nuclear matter further, the nucleons start overlapping each other and eventually dissolve. What remains is a plasma consisting of quarks and gluons in which the quarks can freely move. The experimental investigation of such a state of matter would bring new insights about the dynamics of a supernova explosion and the structure of the neutron stars, and shed light on the fundamental questions about the quarks confinement and the origin of matter. The only possibility to compress nuclear matter in a laboratory is to accelerate heavy atomic nuclei to extreme high energies and let them collide. Here we can see a microscopic simulation of such a collision. Two uranium nuclei, which are contracted due to their relativistic velocities, approach each other and collide, forming a hot and dense fireball for a very short moment. In the very first stage of the collision the nuclear matter is highly compressed, then the fireball explodes and emits up to 1000 particles, most of them created during the collision. The precise measurement of all these particles, their masses and energies, give information on the conditions within the fireball and hence on the properties of compressed nuclear matter. The future International Fair Accelerator Complex delivers high energy and highly intense heavy ion beams. FAIR provides also secondary beams of rare instable nuclear antiprotons. This variety of beams offers unique research opportunities in the fields of nuclear structure physics, nuclear and hadronic physics, plasma physics, biophysics and material research. One large cave will host the compressed bionic matter experiment. Here the concrete walls are a few meters thick in order to shield off the radioactive radiation produced by the nuclear reactions. The CBM experiment is a combination of various detector systems incorporating different detection technologies. The largest detectors serve for identification of particles over a wide energy range. Hadrons, electrons, muons and photons can be discriminated by the time of flight and their characteristic energy loss. The nuclear collisions take place within a strong magnetic dipole field that deflects the charged particles. The curvature of a track allows to determine their momentum. At the entrance of the dipole magnet, a set of targets is located where the beam projectiles collide with atomic nuclei at rest. A silicon tracking system is located behind the targets. It consists of approximately 1 million segments read out individually. This highly granulated system registers the passage of charged particles and provides the curvature measurements of up to 1000 tracks per reaction. The next detector serves for the identification of electrons which move faster than light in a gas volume. These electrons radiate Cherenkov photons which are measured. Alternative to the electron detector, a muon detection system is designed. It consists of several layers of large area detectors sandwiched between iron slabs with an overall thickness of more than 2 meters. Most of the emitted particles will be absorbed in the iron except the muons which penetrate the iron and reach the last detector layers.
A nuclear collision proceeds as follows. A heavy atomic nucleus is accelerated up to almost speed of light and then collides with another nucleus from the target, forming a hot and dense fireball which finally explodes into up to 1000 particles, most of them newly created. These particles fly through the various detector systems and generate signals which have to be processed and read out. This task is particularly challenging as about 10 million collisions take place within one second. These measurements require extremely fast and radiation hard detectors and a high speed data acquisition system which will be realized using future technologies. For example, the data acquisition system will be based on high performance processors which are being developed for the next generation PlayStations. In each collision, 10,000s of detector signals are recorded. The experimental challenge is to reconstruct correctly the tracks of all particles from these signals and to filter out those rare particles which serve as diagnostic probes of the dense matter. One of these probes are pairs of electrons and positrons or pairs of muons with opposite charge. Another very sensitive probe of dense nuclear matter are heavy particles containing a charm quark which decay after flight paths of some 100 micrometer. The compressed bionic matter experiment is the largest project in future high-energy heavy iron research. It can only be realized with an international framework. The CBM collaboration actually consists of more than 400 scientists from 15 countries. They will have to work over a period of 10 years on the preparation of the experiment. Finally, it will take many years of measurements, data analysis and comparison to theory in order to explore the fundamental forces which keep the world together.